Hey everyone, it's Eric here and today we're exploring connections between Myers-Briggs type indicator and the Enneagram. So if you're curious about intersections and how these different systems work together, today is the video where we explore those questions in depth together. Now what I want you to know is, uh, what I want you to think about is, if you know your Myers-Briggs type, you can use this video to figure out your Enneagram type. And if you know your Enneagram type, you can use this video to figure out your Myers-Briggs type. So that's a good, good way to get into different systems. This is really an introduction video for anyone, depending on if they come from the MBTI or if they come from the Enneagram. Now first, what's the difference? Well, if you ask an expert from the Enneagram about your Enneagram type, what they will focus on is your emotional experiences, your intentions, your values, and your struggles in life. They'll talk about your traumas, they'll talk about your emotional patterns, how you deal with anger, fear, and stress. And that is how they will help you find your Enneagram personality type. Now, if you ask an MBTI expert about your personality type, what will they tell you? Well, they will tell you about your con cognition, your thinking pattern. So what you already notice is there's already a kind of a divide where Enneagram practitioners tend to come more from the feeling side and MBTI experts tend to come more from the thinking side. So they are looking at different angles of personality or thoughts versus your feelings. Now, obviously, you want to learn and know both because if you understand both what a person is thinking and how they rationalize their actions and how they come to a certain decision, but also the emotions they associate with said decision and the values and the feelings they put into trying to figure out the solution or to think about the situation, that's how you really know a person from all sides and angles. Okay, so... When you look at the MBTI, you can see there are eight primary dichotomies to think about. Introversion, extroversion, feeling, thinking, intuition, sensing, judging and perceiving. Now every one of them has a connection in the Enneagram. I'm going to run through all of these. I'm going to first start off with Enneagram 7 and the extrovert. So these two types, they are very similar. On a surface level, they have a lot of similarities, more similarities than any other connection. A lot of Enneagram 7 types are very outgoing and they go out into the world to learn and explore and have things to do. They prefer to have things to do. They dislike feeling bored or stuck. They are often feeling like something is missing and so they go out into the world to get information. Extroverts are people that tend to neglect their inner life and emotions as they are always just too busy. There is so much to do that there is no time to sit through and process and sift through all the information that's going on in there. Enneagram 7 and extroverts have a lot of similarities to worth looking at. So if you are very extroverted, that's already a strong argument for being an Enneagram 7. Or if you are very much identifying with Enneagram 7, that's already a strong argument that you're an extrovert. Now, if you look at introversion in the opposing angle, you want to connect the introverted tendency with the self-preservation instinct. In Enneagram, there are three instincts, self-preservation, social instinct, sexual instinct. So introverts and self-preservation types, they are very, very similar and they share a lot of similar characteristics. They can be very focused on their own home, their health and their private sphere, their own mind, their inner world, their thoughts and protecting those thoughts and protecting the self and protecting yourself from the outer world. Introverts are people that tend to be very focused on their own thoughts and feelings and who they are and their identity. So they spend a lot of time thinking about these things and uh, how they can nurture those things. So they tend to emphasize harmony, stability, structure, health, and uh, having a healthy routine in life. Or they tend to focus on, uh, you know, m m protecting your own ideas and your own values and your own theories and maintaining your own ideas and uh, testing and proving yourself in the world. So both of these types, they tend to be nesters. So that means they tend to nest in their own homes or they tend to uh, find a safe place or a secure environment where they can uh, go inside and introspect and uh, keep and nurture themselves. So what about intuition? 
When you look at and when you think, consider yourself a strongly intuitive type, you're often also going to identify a lot with Enneagram 5. Enneagram 5 is a type that is uh, really very much focused on investigation, figuring things out. How do they work? What is the world? What is life? What is existence? What does it feel to exist? Enneagram 5 types, they occupy themselves often with abstract or mental questions. They search for knowledge and exploration and ideas and theories. They go into themselves to figure out answers. They, this can sometimes lead to confusion with being introverted, by the way, uh, try to come up with their own answers or their own unique perspectives to answer questions in the world. A lot of time Enneagram 5s tend to doubt themselves on a practical level. They tend to feel they are unfit to deal with practical tasks and uh, they tend to feel like misfits in society. I don't fit in, I don't dress like everyone else, I don't think like everyone else, I don't act like everyone else. Am I able to live and thrive in the community like everyone else? Am I able to handle practical tasks and chores? Am I able to work and be effective at the workplace? even though I am so weird and think so differently about the world. Sensing types, they tend to share a lot of commonalities with the uh, social types in Enneagram. So if you have a strong social instinct, that's a strong indicator that you're actually a sensing type. Now, what that means is you are trend setting, you are enjoy popularity, you enjoy community, you like and appreciate family. Those things are very important to you. Sensing types tend to be very family oriented. They want to have a close community. They tend to want to and seek to fit in. They like to make other people feel welcome. They like to build a common group or identity on us. They tend to um, adjust themselves to fit in. They tend to look at what role they need to follow in the group to be valuable to the community. They look, okay, what do I need to do? What chores are, do I need to partake in? What tasks do I need to do in order to contribute to society or to my community in different ways? So these types, they often do worry about being left out or being bullied or excluded. And they can also struggle with doubts or fears about the future or about change or being redundant or useless. So that's all interesting when you look at sensing and the social instinct. What about thinking now? Well, thinking types, they tend to live life according to firm rules and principles. Just like Enneagram 1, they approach the world critically. They think about what is perfect, what is efficient, what is productive. Enneagram 1s and thinking types, they all think and approach and use systems to better the world. They try to use tools or solid methodologies, evidence to better themselves or to improve themselves. Now, some people might be wondering what I have in my chest and it's a uh, Mandarin. It's nothing weird, no worries. Anyways, it's time we talk about uh, thinking and Enneagram 1. What's important about the Enneagram 1 is that this uh, tendency to be very critical tends to lend to a fear of making mistakes or saying things you shouldn't do or uh, doing things that are wrong. So they can often lead to an inhibition. You can become very guarded with your feelings. You can be afraid of being hurt by other people. You can be afraid of hurting others. It can lead to like this almost irrational because uh, fear of uh, being hurt by other people, letting other people in into your own world or letting other people be important. So a lot of time Enneagram 1 types, they can appear a bit closed off or reserved or negative or critical. A lot of people will assume that, oh, thinking types, they don't like me or Enneagram 1s, they don't like me because they appear standoffish because they are very guarded. They are guarding themselves and their own feelings very much and they need to know it is rational and right before they engage with other people and talk with other people on a more personal level. Then we have the feeling types and they are on the contrary, very relationship oriented and very generous types. Feeling types tend to focus on their values and want to do the right thing. But sometimes they will neglect their own needs and uh, they will do stupid things or irrational things uh, because 
it is in tune with their values or their moral compass. They will sacrifice themselves or they will abandon logic or they will ignore their own uh, head or their better judgment when getting to know other people or when helping other people. So they might uh, put the need to be helpful or worthwhile or to connect with other people above their own security or safety or um, above themselves. Sometimes they can be described as naive or too trusting and sometimes they can have their kindness manipulated. But they can also on the other side be described as manipulative as they project their own needs into other people. They might uh, want to impose their own values or feelings on others and want to think they know better how you should live or how you should act. Now the feeling type, that type has a lot of similarities to the Enneagram 2 type, the helper. So the Enneagram 2 helper type is very much focused on what they can do for others. So they try to help and support other people and they tend to put other people first. They always compare themselves to others. That's something I noticed about all feeling types as well. They compare themselves constantly to other people. I feel this way, but that person feels this way. I think this way, but that person seems to think that way. A lot of time they tend to even look at other people before they look at themselves. It's like they first define what other people are doing and feeling and thinking, and then in relation to that they define themselves. And um, so that can lead to uh, identifying with other people's thoughts as if they were your own, or feeling other people's feelings as if they were yours and uh, struggling to tell apart what you are and what you feel and what you want from what other people want. Then we have the judging personality type and the people that are very, very J, very, very judging. They can best be described as a uh, bit Enneagram 8-like. Why is that? Well, it, it is because judging tend to be associated with uh, leadership, proactiveness, aggression, and control. So uh, the Enneagram 8 is really a combination of all those things and the fifth very crucial thing and that is fairness. Enneagram 8s they are very focused on asserting themselves, taking action, doing, improving, bettering and having an influence on the world. They want to, to uh, matter to the world and to have an impact and they want to feel they are in control of their own life and they want to act and do things that will put them ahead of other people or well uh, let them win over other people if necessary. They also have a very strong focus on fairness and that is wanting the world to abide with certain order, wanting there to be certain structures and systems that are fair and just. So everyone should have a level playing field, everyone should have some equal abilities to achieve and succeed in life and uh, there should be tools and methods for me to get ahead. There should be a guideline or a tool set I can use to become more successful or to succeed in life. Now, now we come to the last type and that's the perceiving type and okay if you are a perceiving type you might find that there are inclinations to going against the flow. Uh, you dislike following a straight line in life, you are very individualistic, you're very much a person that goes against the flow and goes against the community and does your own thing. So perceiving types when, are, when they are very perceiving they are often very rebellious, they are contrarians, they are black sheep, they are outsiders looking in. So a lot of time they are people that uh, define themselves against what other people think or say or do. So when other people say or do things, perceiving types look at this and then they say, yeah, but, or yeah, I would say I'm different than this. This is what you think and this is what I think. So perceiving types, they have a much more strong emphasis on their own world and their own thoughts and their own feelings. What you can see with the Enneagram 4 type is the Enneagram 4 type is attracted to the unique, different or unusual. They prefer things to be different. They prefer people that are a bit odd. They like people that are a bit quirky. They are people that can sometimes worry about being insignificant or not mattering or not or being like everyone else. And so they can also be a bit prone to melancholy as they can feel left out or like they don't fit in anywhere. Because they are and feel different. 
So that's it. Extroverts should look at Enneagram 7. Introverts should look at the self-preservation instinct. Intuitive should look at Enneagram 5. Sensors should look at the social instinct. Thinking type should look at Enneagram 1. Feeling type should look at Enneagram 2. Judging types should look at Enneagram 8. And perceiving types should look at Enneagram 4. Now, I did leave out a few Enneagram types there. and We are going to talk about those. Because the Enneagram talks about some personality traits that are only brushed upon or likely talked about in the MBTI community. So these are really interesting traits that we should all look at and, and look at in ourselves because they can tell us some really interesting things about ourselves. First, we have um, the assertive type, the Enneagram 3 type, the doer. Then we have the turbulent type, the anxious type, the Enneagram 6, the worrier or doubter. Finally, we have uh, the peace-seeking types, the Enneagram 9, and the influencers, the people with a strong sexual instinct. So, let's start with the influencers, the sexual types. Sexual types are people that are attracted to, uh, you know, being unique, being different, being strong, standing out, and making noise or giving attention to themselves. They want to be seen and heard. They go on YouTube, they go on the world, they go talk to people, they go uh, stand up for themselves, they go blast or push for what they want into the world. They are and enjoy having an impact on other people. They want to matter and mean something to others. So they often use strong words and uh, they like to. They like things that have an impact, that make people feel something and make people shake or uh, care or get passionate or emboldened. The sexual instinct type should really be contrasted against the Enneagram 9 types because the Enneagram 9 types, they are much more modest, much more meek, much more careful, much more peace-seeking than the sexual types. While the sexual types tend to attract conflict because they stand out and they dress different, talk different, and often talk in order to get an effect on people, no matter if that's anger or passion or love or hatred, they like to get you to care. Enneagram 9 types, they like to get you to feel relaxed and comfortable. They want you to uh, relieve tension in yourself and they want to relieve tension in themselves. They want to avoid criticism and scorn and so they want to go along with the flow. They want to go along with the flow and have a sense of harmony and stability in their life. They prefer when things are easy going and when, people, when things are a bit more low scale and low ambition then they dislike when things are too high pitched or too loud or too much then we can talk about turbulent versus the assertive types and the 16 personalities has kind of touched upon turbulent and assertive and started to investigate this and i'm starting to do that as well assertive types are people that are very strong in themselves they have a strong feeling that they can do things they are confident and because they are confident, they attract power and ambition. They say, I can do it. I can take care of it. I can fix it. I can improve it. They have a sense of strength in their own abilities and power. And so they go out into the world and they are very much people that try to get things solved. They tend to want to earn or attract success or popularity. They want to, uh, people to see them, hear them and like them and appreciate them. They want to show the world that I can, that I'm a hero, I'm, I'm able, I'm strong in myself, I am a doer. And this is very different from the Enneagram 6 style, because the Enneagram 6 style is so much more conscientious. What that means is the Enneagram 6 is a person that uh, has a sense of neuroticism or sense of doubt or worry that they might say something wrong or do something they shouldn't, or that other people might do something wrong or something they shouldn't. The Enneagram 6 is a person that worries about failure or making mistakes or saying or mess, messing up or uh, something unexpected happening that they didn't plan for. And so they plan for it. They plan and plan and plan and they think and think and think to try to get themselves out of that situation. What do I need to learn? What do I need to improve? What do I need to fix in order to avoid a bad scenario? How can I manage my anxiety and doubt and worry? Well, by preparing and prepping and prepping and improving and bettering and fixing, 
and uh, talking with people, talking with people, confirming. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get this? Do you feel the same way I do? Uh, what about if this happens? Are you prepared for that? Do you, can you handle this? Enneagram 6 is uh, people that worry but also seek stability and harmony and trust. So they want to be trustworthy and dependable to others and they want other people to be trustworthy and dependable to them. Now, how can you find out your Enneagram type? First, I want you to look at your strongest manifested personality traits inside your personality type. So if you're an unusually introverted INTJ, that's worth looking at. Or if you're unusually uh, judging ENFJ, that J is worth investigating further. Why am I so J? Why am I so intuitive? Why am I so feeling? Why am I so introverted? Look at and think about what it is you are the most by comparing yourself to other people with the same type as yourself. So if you know celebrities or other people that have the same type as you, compare yourself and see, okay, they are about that level and introversion and about that level and intuition. Well, I'm about that level and intuition. So how can that be? And what does that say about me? Does it mean that something unhealthy in myself? Am I obsessing more? Do I worry more? Uh, am I more neurotic? Now, that takes us to step two, to finding out your Enneagram type. And that is look at the four new personality traits. So look at uh, what uh, personality traits or unique preferences or strange preferences that you have in you, that other people of your personality type doesn't have. So if you find that somebody, uh, an ENFJ, is very meek and modest while you are very much confident and uh, very strong in yourself and outspoken, that's something worth looking at. Uh, that's what the objective personality calls masculine or feminine. Uh, feminine types, they are a bit more meek and a bit more open-ended and a bit more abstract, while masculine types are a bit more strong-worded, pushy, and uh, firm in their values and beliefs. Look at if you are more like a doer, more confident, or look at the uh, yeah, how you manifest different personality traits. Take an Enneagram test and take a good one. I have a test at ericdor.com slash test slash Enneagram test. Uh, and uh, if you want to look at other tests, there's also the Enneagram Institute and other more established organizations. They have studied this for a long time so they can already with high accuracy pinpoint your personality type. That finally, think about your primary needs and traumas in life and listen to your own self and your own thoughts. What am I feeling? Why do I feel a certain way? Why do I think a certain way? Finally, make a list of the Enneagram types or the MBTI types that you want to explore first. So, and then dive into those one at a time, go deep, look at everything you can read about this type, learn everything about different people who are this type, go and study them, look at their behavior, look at their actions, look at what they say, and take the time to really learn and dig into different personality traits. That's probably the best way to get acquainted with and understand others and the best way to get acquainted with and understand yourself a little bit better. Now, if this video helped you figuring out your personal type, I'm really happy to hear. So let me like or share this video with others that want to figure out their Enneagram or MBTI type and comment down below if you enjoyed or agreed with anything in this video. Thanks for watching and see you all later.